Hey, what's up? John Sanmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So I'm gonna answer a question that I know nothing about <laughs> because I'm not a, well, you know, I've been an MVP for Xamarin. I'm a Xamarin MVP right now, but someone asked this question about, is it worth it to become an MVP? And I'm gonna answer this, but before I do, I wanna tell you about the awesome sponsor that we have a Simple Programmer, which is Hire.com. So if you haven't heard of them already, if you, if you haven't heard me say it, say how awesome they are, I like to use the word awesome with Hire.com because that's what I think. Because there's really awesome people working there and they're really cool company. You should check them out. Go to hire.com forward slash simple programmer. And what they basically do is they flip job searching on its head, I think, or on its side, maybe. I don't know. They flip it around. And basically, instead of you sending out resumes everywhere, they let you fill out an application in one place. This is what makes sense to me, guys, right? And then after that, all these companies go and they look and they choose you from that one place. That makes so much more sense. So they're soliciting you as opposed to you soliciting all these other companies, which makes a lot of sense because you know they're interested, obviously, and it doesn't waste a huge amount of your time. This is a way to do it. So I hope that they have huge success because I want to see the job search change in this way and, and Hired is, is leading that charge. So go to Hired.com for a simple programmer. If you do that, if you use that link, you'll get $2,000 if you get a job through Hired, and you know that's better than the 1,000 that you get if you don't use that link. So uh, you know I, I like a free thousand bucks. I don't know about you. Anyway, go check it out. Hired.com forward slash Simple Programmer, and thanks a lot for Hired.com for sponsoring Simple Programmer and sponsoring a few of these uh, YouTube episodes. So anyway, I got this question. Man, I like to say anyway. I'm gonna have to break that habit. I'm gonna like smack myself in the teeth every time I say anyway. Now everyone's gonna be counting like, oh, you said anyway. That maybe that'll be a good punishment, you know. <laughs> anyway, ah, oh, damn it, I did it. I need to like, I need a buzzer. So I'd be like, anyway, that's one of those, one of those words. Like I need to go to Toastmasters, and then someone needs to like smack me with a two by four or whatever I say anyway. So, oh, that's a transition word as well. I got this question that says, "Is it worth it to become an Embicardo?" Em, I think it's Embicar. Em, 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 Embar Cadero, Embar Cardero. There we go. MVP or a Microsoft MVP. So, I've got some additional info here. I, I might as well read this. I would prefer this to be focused on Embar. Why can't I say this? Embar Cadero. Embar. If someone knows how to say this right, you you know, put it down below because I, I have no idea. But I, I'm familiar with the name, but not the pronunciation. I always read it. You, you know those words that you always read and you never actually pronounce, and then you try to pronounce it and you're like, yep, don't have any idea. This is one of those for me. So when he says, uh, I like, I plan on becoming an, an <laughs> embarcadero MVP at the age of, let's say, 19. How will this help me in the future? Is it really worth it to try hard to contribute to the community and then become? an Embar Sidero MVP. I'm probably butchering the hell out of that word, by the way. Just like I like to say Udacity instead of Udacity. So, okay, so let's talk about MVP in general, because I don't know about this Embasir. <laughs> I don't know about the Embasiro Embar Sidero technology. I don't know about that so much, okay? I can't know everything. But I will tell you about becoming an MVP in general. Like, is it worth it to become an MVP in a community? Now, again, I'm not a Microsoft MVP. I'm not an Ambassador Dero <laughs> MVP. I am a Xamarin MVP. I did get the, the Xamarin MVP when I was involved in the community quite a bit, doing courses and, and stuff like that. I really, really like Xamarin. So uh, technically, shouldn't that make me a Microsoft MVP? Shouldn't I be like a Xamarin MVP for Microsoft since Microsoft owns it? I don't know. They never send me the little thing. Everyone, everyone posts on their Facebook. They're like, I got renewed for MVP, and I and I and I cry a little tear because I was never a Microsoft MVP. I'm like a I'm a reject. I'm a no. You know what I am? I'm a rebel. That's what I am. I, I'm gonna go with the rebel. So I I really should answer this question. So benefits of becoming an MVP, you get exclusive access to the environment, right? To usually new tools, information that other people don't have access to. That can translate into a high marketability. I think that it's it's worth taking the effort if that's in your field, right? So for example, you know, and if that's if that's the path you're going. For me, a lot of people said, well, John, why don't you ever try to become a Microsoft MVP? Well, there's a couple of reasons why. If they give me a Microsoft MVP without me trying, 
I'm happy to accept it. I'll be honored. You know, that, that's fine. But I'm not going to go down the path and chase it for, for a couple of reasons. One, it doesn't really help me affect me that much because I'm not focused on Microsoft technologies. Uh, two, I don't want to necessarily appear partial to Microsoft technologies because I'm, you know, pretty neutral. Like I'm just going to do what works, and I don't want to feel like, I, even though I wouldn't be influenced, right? You've got people like Scott Hanselman who, honestly, like they they could he works for Microsoft. He could literally give a shit. He is not a shill for Microsoft. I know the man. He's an awesome guy. He is not a shill for Microsoft. But people people on Hacker News think he is. They're like, oh, Scott Hanselman. Oh, he's a shill for Microsoft. Mm, mm. So that's one thing to consider with the MVP is that people may think that you, they may question your motives and they may think that when you're promoting a technology, well, it's because you're an MVP or because you work for the company and that might not be true. But the benefit is that, again, you get exclusive access to to the new products and, and information that other people don't have. There's also this tight knit, knit kind of community kind of environment, right? So I know a lot of the Microsoft MVPs, they have this MVP summit. It was just, I think, last month or something at the time I'm recording this video. And you get together and you get to like have cool parties and like meet all these people and make some great connections and you've all got something in common. You're kind of an exclusive group. So anytime you can become part of an exclusive group like that, I think that's a good thing. So in general, I'd say MVP programs make a lot of sense especially if it's harder to get in, if it's more of a tight-knit group. Not only that, but you're gonna have opportunities, right? Because, you know, I know just being as airman MVP, if I wanted to do consulting, I would, I would just being an MVP would give me tons of consulting business to do Xamarin stuff, if that's what I wanted to do. You know, I've never, I, I haven't gone down that road because I've got my mission with Simple Programmer, but it opened up a door for me. I could see how, you know, Xamarin would, would send customers that to MVPs, they say, well, we can't, you know, create this custom solution for you, but we've got an MVP program, we've got MVPs, and they would send out broadcasts and stuff like that, right? So I know that Microsoft probably has a similar type of thing, and you just have connections, so you'll be able to hear from other MVPs and, you know, get get kind of, you know, I've got some work in this area. So so I think it, it makes sense. Now, the I'm going to have to say it again, aren't I? <laughs> and Boris Sidero, <laughs> Why is it so freaking hard to say? I got Embar Sidero. Embar Sidero. Embar Sidero. Embar if, if I only spoke Spanish, I would, I would, this would be no problem, right? But anyway, I don't know about that. Oh, see, I said anyway. Man, this is, this is I'm having language troubles in this video. Please, somebody help me. It, oh, I almost said it. <laughs> I'm having too much fun. All right, so so I don't know about that community, right, with, for that Ambassadero technology, but I'm assuming that it's probably has some exclusivity. I'm assuming that it's probably worth it. You know, being known in the community, it's not just about the MVP in this case, right? If you're going to contribute to community and you build up a reputation and a name there, it's going to have huge benefits, especially if you want to do freelancing, especially if you want to do consulting. You know, anytime you have this opportunity to build a name and a reputation for yourself or put yourself, set yourself aside, put yourself into a set of exclusive people or make connections with exclusive people, it's a good thing for you. It's a good thing for your career. It's going to help you with marketing and branding yourself, right? Which is something that I, I highly, highly recommend. So I think it's a great idea. You know, I don't think it's the end all be all. You know, I wouldn't devote like a ridiculous amount of time to becoming an MVP, but if it if you're going down a specific technology route, right? For example, if you're going down the Xamarin route or if you're going down a specific technology route with Microsoft or if you're going down a specific technology route with Embarcadero, <laughs> Then, then it makes sense to do this as long as the effort isn't like ridiculously great. And I don't think it is, honestly. And and I, I did this video on how to become an Microsoft MVP, even though I've never become one. You should check that out because that's going to apply to you as well. Basically, you need to find people who are MVPs already, get in good with them, get them to basically recommend you, tell them that you're interested, you know, do that kind of stuff in order to be able to become an MVP. That's going to accelerate the process. Don't just like post on forums and hope that someone recognizes you. Maybe they will, but probably not. I guarantee you, probably most MVPs, they like sort of dropped hints and they told people they wanted to become MVPs and they talked to the right people and then suddenly they're nominated. I would assume that that's how it works. You know, I think probably a lot of MVPs that are listening to this could probably nod their heads and say, yeah, 
podcast, you know, leave a comment below and, and let people know that that's, that's how it works, right? So that's, that's what logically makes sense to me. It's not just gonna happen. It's not just gonna be bestowed upon you. So don't just do a ridiculous amount of work. Figure out how you can leverage, how you can do the 80-20 rule, how you can do the 20% that's gonna give you 80% of the results in this case, right? What, what is it? It's, it's, it's almost always the answer to your question, or the question you need to be asking is who? Right? It's, it's not what or how, it's who. So who do you know, who is a shortcut to, to your success often? You find the person that knows what you need to know or has the connection that you need to have and you're gonna be there much faster. If you like this video, see I, I didn't say anyway, but if you like this video, go ahead and click that subscribe button below and make sure that you check out hire.com and you know, if you click that subscribe button, you're gonna get my videos. I do like two to three a day. All right, I'll talk to you next time. Take care and enjoy that Embarcadero program, whatever. See ya.